Okay, welcome to this lecture. And uh, uh, as far as I understand, you are a student of architecture in design of architecture, right? Is it design of architecture? So today we touch one topic which is uh, for you very different. So it's something unusual, but uh, it is a very, very important. Um, we are not going to des uh, describe anything about the design of architecture, and we are not going to describe anything about the design on ancient building. Okay? Very often in China, but also in other countries, the architects are called to do the design of some ancient building, okay? Different dynasty or even uh, building uh, built maybe 50 or 60 years ago. The topic of this lesson today, it could be very boring for you, okay? Because it is a philological approach. Philological approach, it is something, I promise you, very difficult and very boring. Okay. But I think it is a very important to you for you to open your mind. First of all, in this class, we will describe only ancient building. It doesn't matter how ancient. It doesn't matter if it is a Qing dynasty, Ming dynasty, or 10,000 years ago, or just 20 years ago. That is not a problem. It is a, a building or city which belongs to the past. Hmm? So, Technology, logic, style, habit, social, they are different from today. So we must be very careful. We cannot give our own interpretation, our own design on the ancient building, because we are going to change forever something which belongs to the past. Clear? So, if in the past you learn how to do your own design with your own mind, hmm? create something very fantastic, very new, very special in the ancient context, ancient city or ancient building, that is one kind of learning. Today we are not touching that stuff, but we touch a philological approach. So what does it mean, uh, uh, philological approach? I have some definition later, but the philological, it, it is a, a word which belongs to the uh, analysis of the text. Okay? You know that in the past there are some ancient documents, some ancient book, uh, ancient uh, script, and so on. Because the script are very old, part of the script are, are missed, right? We don't know some words, we don't know some ideograms. <coughs> so the historian cannot invent any words. So if a part, you have a book, very ancient, two, three pages are missed, you cannot give your own interpretation. Your, you cannot complete the book. You cannot write what you want, maybe in a creative way. That is a mistake, right? We don't have the original material, so we must surrender. We don't know uh, what, it, what it was the text. Clear? So, philological investigation, it simply means that you must respect the ancient building, the ancient book, the ancient art, as it was. Clear? Know your idea, your opinion count zero. This is very important. For example, try to imagine some uh, archaeologists find the book of uh, Sun Tzu or the I Ching, some part is missed, and who are you to complete the original book? It's impossible. It is better to say that part of the book is missed and we simply avoid our opinion. Clear? This is a typical, for example, in archaeology, when the people, when the archaeologists study ancient relics. A text is missed, then it's missed forever. Okay? We only can have a comparative analysis. For example, translation. You have one text in, for example, ancient Greek, okay, 
then there is a translation in other language and then you only can compare. If you have some evidence, then you can complete the text. If not, then shut up. Clear? This is uh, the meaning of... Uh, uh, let me ask whether they say do you need, uh, need a translation or not. Do you need a translation because it will mean a lot of time if there is a... Can, can you understand my words? A little bit or zero at all? <laughs> they said that they need a translation. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's difficult to, uh, to, how do you say, to interrupt the professor and... The Not because it's too long. <laughs> no, no, who can't understand any English? Please, don't worry. Okay, who can understand English very well? <laughs> no way. <laughs> So when, when, when you go to a very important uh, uh, part, then I, I can then help you. you. Okay. So now you can do some little translation. Okay. So, okay. He said that you have to respect the old You not Okay, so, good. Okay. Um, so, that is uh, important. Philological means respect the ancient building and add nothing new. Why? Why we need to take care of this issue? Simply because today China has a lot of changes, a lot of very important changes. A lot of historical districts are radically renewed. For example, the city of uh, Mamei, everywhere, Beijing, for example. But also Kuming. Kuming is a city which is, the city center is basically gone. There is no more original building. And even the urban structures, it is not original anymore. It is not only a problem of China, but it's a problem of many parts of the world. Then Italy is a very special country because we are obsessed to preserve the ancient building. So, um, this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, lecture came from our experience in one city, in one town actually, which is, uh, in, um, uh, which is uh, Anhai, Anhai in Fujian province, Chuanzhou, and we have a lot of workshop. And finally, we come out with a book, which is uh, uh, included in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this lecture. Now, first of all, I want, we must make clear about some point uh, about, uh, for example, culture, heritage. Those definitions are defined by UNESCO. Now, I am not a fan of UNESCO, because UNESCO sometime, for many years, did some strategy which was a little bit um, controversial, we can say. But anyway, they give a clear definition. I'm not going to describe in details, but for example, there are definitions about monuments, group of buildings. Uh, uh, okay, ah, this is a touch screen. Ah, that is good, so I can see. Touch. Um, monuments. Monuments, in general, there are single building or relics, sculpture, something like this which is unique, one piece, which is extremely important for uh, his uh, value in the history. For example, the Forbidden City, okay? For example, the Garden of Sujo, it is something really, really important. But then there is a very interesting definition, which is a groups of building. So it means that it is a value, not only the single building themselves, but also together. For example, we know that Suzhou have a very beautiful garden, but what it makes Suzhou special is the system, it's the group, and the relationship in between them. When you are going to investigate, when you are going to study, for example, ancient village, what do you have? The single buildings? No way. Do you have the system clear? And then this is a site. Site it is a, in a much larger scale, which generally speaking include building, uh, groups of building, and then also um, landscape. So it's something much larger. Hmm? Then this topic is also quite uh, quite 
important because it includes also the concept of bioregion, but today we are not going to touch. So, single building, groups of building, site. Single building scale, town, for example, or district, and site, it is something much higher, much bigger. For example, last year, before the pandemic, I went to Sri Lanka, near India, and my student bring me in a very beautiful ancient city, local ancient city, which was huge, very big. It is not a building, it is not a group of buildings, but it is a, a, maybe 10 square kilometers, which is not well defined in terms of city wall, okay? But it is the landscape and the city it itself. Clear? Then there is another very important definition from UNESCO. Tangible culture heritage. Tangible cal uh, uh, culture heritage, it means something that it is uh, tangible. You can touch. Uh, material. Building, wall, painting. Something which is, is uh, concrete. Okay? For example, archaeology, architecture, include the technology for restore those material buildings, and so on. So, for example, even a ancient table, uh, a single painting, uh, a cloth, must be material. Clear? It's very important. Um, this is even more tricky. Intangible, intangible culture heritage. Intangible, it means uh, you cannot touch. Okay. Uh, an example. Songs. Hmm? For example, language. For example, ancient stories. Clear? Um, recently, I went to um, Guyan and I went to uh, one area which belongs to the uh, Miao Tzu, the Chinese. Anyone belongs to some Min Tzu here? You? you? Which Min Tzu? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Bui, Bui, Bui Tzu. Uh, yes, okay. So, you know very well, for example, uh, those minority, Bui, I know, I know many Bui, Bui people, uh, or, or, um, or something like Miao, Dong, uh, Qiang, and so on. There are many, Wa, and so on. Uh, in many cases, the local tradition, they don't have the writing. They use the Chinese writing, but uh, they have a different speaking. Hmm? Those kind of culture, exactly because in the ancient time, they don't have a writing, they have some oral uh, story. Uh, recently I went to a Miao village, Miao Tzu, and they have the myth of one, uh, the origin of Miao. They say that the Miao people come from a butterfly. You know the story, right? No, very interesting. That there, at the beginning of the time, there is no human being. So there is a big butterfly. This big butterfly uh, fall into a river, and it is melt into the river, and give and uh, it, uh, it leave twelve eggs, which is the twelve different meow uh, families. Okay, and so on. Now everywhere, everywhere you go in the world, there are such kind of stories but also the ability to make clothes or handcraft, songs, language, uh, religion, myth, and so on. That is intangible heritage. Now, attention, guys. You are modern, you are young generation, so you are very attached to technology, something concrete, and so on. It's fine, but the ancient people think different from you, okay? So don't be proud and say, we are better than them, we are more advanced, we have more knowledge, because it's not. So 
if you want to understand the ancient culture, you must clean your mind and think as the, the ancient people thought. Clear? So don't use uh, mathematics, uh, computer, parametric, uh, artificial intelligence, this kind of stuff, to understand the ancient culture. You can understand a part of the ancient culture, maybe a lot, but not completely. So you need to jump inside the ancient civilization and try to think how they think, they thought in the past. Clear? This is intangible heritage. Arts, social, the social interaction. For example, when you study the ancient architecture, you know that the architecture has a courtyard, rooms, pavilion, and so on. You can't understand the logic of those stuff without studying the family structures, right? For example, now in China, the family structures is totally different from the past. In the past, they live, we live all together, right? The same in Italy, we have a large family, several generations in one building. In, uh, in Anhai, in Fuzhou, in Fujian, there is a, um, not in Fujian, um, there is a one huge villa with 99 rooms, 99, okay? I think no one of your family has 99 members or more to live together. But in the past, that was a logic. So you can understand the logic of one building only using the modern idea. You must jump back to the ancient society. So this is a social practice. Rituals. Rituals are very important. For example, if you want to study temples, the logic to use a temple is not rational. It's not like uh, this room. Hmm? There is some board, there is one door, the audience, media, the camera, and this kind of nice stuff. And this is our logic. After 400 years, this room becomes something strange for the future generation, right? So, <coughs> temple rituals is not functional. It is not logic. They follow certain kind of uh, reads, habit, which is unusual. For example, if you go to the Christian church in Italy, or in the Christian church in Greece, for example, or in Africa, you can't understand what the people is doing uh, in, in the temple. If you go to Nepal, and we did some workshop in Nepal, for example, the people do something very strange, and you can't understand. So first you must understand the rituals. Clear? If you have any question, please, you can interrupt me anytime, it doesn't matter. Okay, this is a key point, ancient. What we are talking about, it is ancient. But ancient, it doesn't mean the number of the years. 1,000 years ago, 500 years ago. What is ancient? In my personal understanding, um, ancient, it is something that it doesn't exist anymore. Even if it is uh, 10 years ago, okay? For example, some of my habit for you are ancient. We can say so. For example, I like very much the physical book huh, made by paper. And you say, well, you are old fashion guy. Now we don't use anymore. We read the internet. We use a top TikTok and so on. So in, in this case, I am an ancient guy. Okay. Or for example, I like very much handwriting. Okay, and you say, wow, ah, that is from my grandfather, use it, not anymore. It's okay, that is the concept of ancient. Ancient simply means something that you, you cannot replicate. In some buildings, for example, the technology is so uh, ancient that today we cannot replicate anymore. The pyramid in Egypt, can you do it now? No way. Or, for example, some, some ancient church in France. 
Can we do it now? No way. That is ancient. But there is also the opposite case. In China, in Nepal and in, in India, I find some building, some very ancient building, 100, 200, 300 years ago, that they are based on a certain kind of technology, bricks, stone, handcraft, wood, and so on. But the same technology, it can be used also today. So there are some artists who can do exactly the same handcraft as 300 years ago. That is not ancient. It is ancient the material. It is ancient the physical building. But in that case, it is called in technical words the living tradition. Something like the past still continue today. Example, in Qin Dynasty, some technology stand for years, for maybe 100 years. So somehow the history, the history continue to flow, right? It is not a separate. In the Western country, it is a very clear, Italy, for example, Europe is very clear that the past is the past. Modern is modern. There is a very precise cut. We, in Italy, we can't reproduce anymore the same technology of the Renaissance, of the past years. Clear? So, if you can't do again, then you must protect. Clear? Because it's low. You cannot say, ah, but now we have a better material, now we have a plastic, we have a concrete, we have something very... the, 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 the nanotechnology, super materials, synthetic materials. It's fine. It's okay. You can do it. But terrible mistake was made. For example, it is very famous, the case of one very important sculpture, very important column in Rome, very beautiful, okay, made by, made two, over 2,000 years ago, 2,000 uh, more, and because of the traffic, the car, the pollution, the environment become very aggressive, so the material start to become bad, deteriorate, clear? So, one engineer invent a kind of painting based on plastic, super advanced material, super cool, very expensive. So he takes this column and paint the color with this material in order to protect, right? Disaster. It was a disaster because there are uh, very soon every synthetic material, any plastic, it crack, right? It crack because it become dry and it crack. So the water fall come inside the crack, stand in between the stone and the painting, and uh, start to uh, destroy the stone. Disaster. So they must remove all the painting. Clear? The problem is that the ancient building are something that we cannot replicate anymore. So we must protect very well. Then the question is, what is the limit of ancient. And this is why I point out this word. It's very tricky, it's very difficult to understand. Because according what we said, ancient is something that we cannot replicate anymore. Can we rebuild the Gugong? Can we rebuild the Sujo Garden? We can't. Okay, so we must protect. But my professor in Italy, he was a, a leading scholar in, uh, in uh, restoration of ancient building. He said, something, even something that is made 10 years ago, that is ancient and we must protect. I remember very clear one uh, bachelor in Polytechnic of Milan, one bachelor dissertation. So a young student, young student says, ah, uh, there is an ancient building and then there is a parking for bicycle where the student put the bicycle. It was made by very poor material, modern bricks, uh, no quality, piece of steel, rubbish, okay? And then he says, well, my opinion, professor, is to throw away this, uh, this stuff because uh, it's um, not beautiful 
and it is modern. I won't give the, uh, the, to the original ancient building his uh, good looking. My professor, and after we become friends, my professor get crazy and says, who are you to decide what is good and what is bad, what is beautiful and what is ugly? You are no one. So shut up. If, it, if the history create that stuff, you must preserve. Okay? That was his position, correct or incorrect. It is one very clear position. If it is built, then it has his own dignity. Clear? So it's a tricky concept. <coughs> 他说那个古老的不代表是过时的 Thank you. Which kind of intervention, which kind of uh, analysis can we do on the ancient building? Attention, not only ancient building, but to the ancient architecture. Now we understand that architecture is not the single building, but we have a group of building and we have a site. Hmm? So, our intervention concerns, first of all, the urban conformation. When we do analysis uh, in the ancient uh, city, ancient building, first we must consider urban site. Not only the building, but what happened around. Because if the building, for example, is very important, the building give the structures of all the city. Clear? For example, ah, there is a very nice, uh, I don't, I'm not very sure, yes, I have some picture later. There is one, um, uh, one the, 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 in, the, in the town of Anhai, there is a very clear main structures of the city. For example, the road are direct north-south and connect one bridge with uh, one temple and the temple with the mountain. So all the city has a very precise structure. But one sector of the city has a different direction, 45 degrees. So there is north-south, then one part of the city, 45 degrees. Okay? And then inside is a small block, there is another part which is rotate 23 degrees compared to the first one. So the first idea is mess, mistake, someone is not clear in the past. Actually, no. This kind of urban conformation must be linked with the morphology. Morphology, it is an ancient Greek word, which means the logic of the form. So when you are in front of a city, you must ask yourself, why that? If you are in front of one temple and it has a certain kind of orientation, why that? So morphology, investigate the reason of the form. Clear? Urban conformation, the structures of the city. Morphology, the form of the city. Then you have the typology of architecture, so we jam to the scale of architecture. Typology, I don't like. Okay. But for example, in Polytechnic of Milan, they are obsessed about typology. I think the Venice is more obsessed. Even more. Yeah. Milan, but Milan have Aldo Rossi. <laughs> Rossi. Rossi is from Venice, not from Milan. But he teach in Milano. Okay. <laughs> Become the master of Milano. So, Typology, typo when I was in a student, the freshman in, in Polytechnic of Milan, typology, wash mine, typology, typology, typology. And they say, Professor, for me, it's stupid. Okay, so I don't like typology, but it is a very important discipline. Typology, it means that uh, some architecture, but also some painting, everything in the world, 
they have a sort of type. Type, it means something which is similar, not completely the same. For example, those two bottles, they are completely the same, right? Twins, because it is industrial production. But the typology, it means something like, for example, this pen, this pen is a fountain pen, and it is completely different by ball pen. Fountain pen, they are not totally the same, but the typology, the type is similar. For example, your face. Chinese face, it is different from white face. It's the same, two eyes, one nose, the mouth, the hair, and so on. They are basically, we are all human beings, but the type of Chinese face is different from African, for example, to do something. But the, it is a terms of typology, so the building looks similar, similar type, but uh, finally with many modifications. Clear? You can imagine the type of the face. Chinese face, they are all different, but somehow there are something in common. African face, they are all different, but there are something in common. For example, the type of the skin, hmm? the eyes, the lips, okay? Another important point is the process of life. One key point that I'm very interested in is the relationship in between space and human behavior. Hmm? And you cannot say what is more important. The human behavior, it is influenced by the space, but also the space influences the human behavior. Who is the first? No one is the first, like yin and yang. Which one is more important? You can't say. So it is a kind of mutual relationship. So process of life, it means how the people use the space and social habits. Some of the research that we have done concern, uh, you are technical guy, right? so there are some studies which concern the thermal comfort in the building, ventilation, lighting, sound, and so on. In the ancient Chinese architecture, there are some uh, very good performance in terms of ventilation, for example, the courtyard. Hmm? Very good performance in terms of climatization. So one or oh, one, three members of our team, they study what is the use today, how the people today use the space in a relationship with the thermal comfort. Okay, and they find there are some connection. <laughs> 呃，就如何运用就古代的空间，现代人用古代空间，呃，然后跟室内热舒适的关系，就房间你待在那里感觉热热还是热？Okay, clear. Okay. This picture, in my opinion, is a fantastic. Okay, for you, you are Chinese. For you, maybe it's normal. But I am completely captured by this picture for one reason. The quality of the picture is not very high, but okay, the original was better. Anyway, this picture, it is in Fujian, near and high, and it is made by my very good friend. It is modern. Hmm? It is made uh, two or three years ago. But every detail, every detail, it is uh, um, according with the ancient culture okay if you take the ancient temple and this modern temple they're very similar okay in terms of decoration because this architect he's not an architect actually he's a master builder hmm? master builder is the one who make physical physically the things not the, like us who design on paper and after somebody else will do it. He do it. And he belongs to a family of three or four generations who do exactly the same job. So his grandfather and the father of his grandfather, he do exactly the same things. A little bit different, of course, because the time change, but more or less the same. So question, it is old or new? It's hard to say. 
What I'm going to say is the concept of ancient, the concept of original, is very tricky. He uh, made a... Uh, it's not this case. He made another temple. I don't have in this lecture. He made a temple in, in the mountain of uh, uh, Fuzhou, in, in, of Anhai, uh, near Chuanzhou. And uh, this temple is, uh, again, like this one, very decorated, uh, very rich, uh, according with the traditional. Hmm? And uh, he called me and let me notice two main columns of the main pavilion, two pillars, okay? And then I said, look very careful. It was fantastic, no? There's a dragon and people and landscape, you know? It's very decorated, the architecture of Fuzhou is very decorated. And he said, one is made by 3D printer. Another is made, is handmade. Okay. Handmade was really beautiful, really, really nice, because uh, have the flavor, every detail is, uh, uh, is beautiful, it's fresh. Huh? The, hand, the machine made, it is also very nice, but it is uh, industrial production. Uh, is is special, so you can clearly understand the difference. Okay, so in the the point is in the same temple, a master builder with a four generation of background use a three D printer and use handmade column. Okay, at the same time. At the same time. 就是说那个那个工匠他们有三代的传承，然后到他这一代就在同一个呃寺庙里面有两个大的立柱，就是说同时。呃，一个是立柱是用手去雕刻的，另外一个是用机器去三D打印的，就是同时用了手工艺和机器。OK，OK，Clear？Okay. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you see? Yes, yes, yes. From far is okay. This is the city, the town of Anhai. Why I show you this picture? This picture is very interesting to me because it is a, a clear expression of modern and ancient. This boundary, it is the ancient town, and you can recognize by the pattern. This is clearly modern, right? But inside the ancient town, it is easy, we take care of this stuff. This is modern, not interesting, this is uh, our treasure. It's not so simple. I tell you why, two reasons. First, because inside the ancient town, there are modern buildings. But this modern building has exactly the same size of the ancient parcel. So it is modern, but it's the memory of the ancient. In the modern city here, it's a very interesting fact. Anhai, they have some special rule in the form of the road. Okay? For example, they have a kind of joint in between small road and the block. Okay? If a road arrives on the block, in front of the road, you cannot have any shop, any house, anything, only a temple. Because the feng shui is not good. Okay, so there is a bad energy, so only the temple can stop the energy, okay? So always temple. Good. So the structures of the city, it is generated according with the local tradition, local myth, local religion. Most of the people who live in the ancient town doesn't feel, don't feel very comfortable because the houses are old, no toilet, ventilation, no kitchen, and so on. So the local government built this new building with modern facilities. So for us, it's not good. Me, if I can, I would like to live in the ancient building, okay? All the people prefer to live here. It's clear, it's logic, but then the family structures change. Because in the ancient building, maybe 20, 30, 50, even 100 people can live together. Here, 
only husband, wife, and eventually one child. So the mutual relationship is missed. This is something also very funny. Because the ancient town was based on this kind of, they call it jinn, hmm? temples, and one every jinn is a kind of compound block, there is one temple. Because the local habit, they build temple inside the modern building, where there is no space for temples. So it's a kind of uh, uh, change the imagination of the architect. So you, who are majored in architecture, you must design modern building. You will never imagine a residential compound like this with some small part for temple. Clear? Okay. okay, cool. In the past, I did a design for a residential compound in a, in a city near, near Nanjing. So I proposed to the client, but I think you must add some temple inside this residential compound. No way. We are not interested, okay, because it's a modern development. But then, finally, you should consider when you design an ancient building, what is the ancient habit of the local people? Hmm? This is why I mentioned philological uh, investigation, because of philological it means understand with their mind, not with your mind, because your mind is modern, you are young. Okay? This is another very interesting case of uh, uh, philological analysis. This part, it's a building, this picture is a bit different, it's fantastic. And it's, well, it's rubbish, it is uh, something called, uh, I can do better, okay? If you give, if, professor, if you give me this project, I can do a masterpiece in this corner. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, but this is a philological investigation. So remember, your opinion counts nothing. This place for the historian, in the history of architecture is very interesting. Because you have a combination of at least four or five addition. So every 10 years, someone add his own project. So you can find the original block, which is this. Oh, sorry. You have the original block, if I remember well, it is a 3.4, 3.5 meters, which is the size of the wood beam, right? More than 3.5 meters, it is possible to build a house in the ancient time, but the size of the wood is too big, so it becomes too expensive. So all and high was based on a module of 3.4 meters. Ta, 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 ta. Because in that case, the wood was uh, cheap enough to uh, be to be um, to be acquired by the local people who were not rich. Hmm? But then, in the modern time, they throw down the wood structures and they rebuild the concrete structures. But then, on this side, you have some strange addition made half by wood. Half by part by wood, part by glass, part by bricks, and so on. So it's a very strange combination. This part must be respected because it is the layer of the history. Okay. Okay, you can translate. Um, okay. He said but, but I have a totally different opinion. But, okay, uh, my on. opinion that doesn't come. No, 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 you should, you should. Tell, tell me. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you go first. No, I'm interested. Uh, I'm interested. As a technical, uh, okay. technical researcher, I don't think it's really valuable. And, uh, and I also received my, my bachelor, master's degree, and a PhD in architecture. I also I had a history uh, classes, uh, history courses, but I really don't think we need to put too much attention on this. Yes, right. No, because you are a young and modern guy. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. It is a, it is a, a different interpretation. 
in uh, I promise people who is doing the philological investigation of the ancient city, they are obsessed by this kind of details. There are even discussion if this kind of rubbish facade have to be preserved or not, because it's just, even me, who I'm a really picky, I pay attention, I respect all, I hate this kind of facade, really, for me it's a toilet. But then, uh, I uh, really, so people really, someone preserve everything, okay? Because, for example, maybe in the past, this kind of monument was not available, and then they keep it, okay? So, a lot of, situ for example, in the past, a lot of very valuable relics was thrown away because somebody thinks it's not valuable, okay? And then you say, ah, not, not good. Hey, the question is, uh, who we are to throw away something from the past? because it is a layer of the time. Someone think it's okay, someone think it's not okay. Hmm? But this is a, a trend, eh? so it's not only your opinion or my opinion. There are school of thought, so it's, no one is right. Hmm? But the only things I can say is, in, the, in, India, in India, there is one, um, one trend, very, very famous, which is, uh, is called local language, uh, Swadeshi which it means old stuff, old stuff. For example, old hat, uh, old watch, a table, a building, something which is old. And there is a trend, maybe 100 years ago, that they start to hate this old stuff. Hmm? It's too old, throw away. Even my mother throw away a lot of very beautiful stuff from her parents. It's too old. I look this this furniture for 20 years. Take off. Now, young generation, I mean people like you or younger, 16, 20 years old, they love stuff made in 1980. So they think they are ancient. So, for example, the songs of 1980, which I hate, the, 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 the computer, Oh, I, I, I bought a computer in 1986, okay, it's a piece of plastic, I mean, and now the museum needs the, the, the stuff, because we become old, okay, so things from the past, it is, generally speaking, valuable, especially in some countries like Europe, which are obsessed by ancient things, okay, this is the same, the modern city growth, this is a typical facade made in 1980, okay, 1980, 1990, and this piece, which is more ancient, it is completely absorbed in the, uh, in the, in the building. There are six possible actions when you're going to study and to design a city in terms of historical preservation. The first one is the philological preservation of the historical heritage. The first one is what I like very much. So you take care of every single detail. You must preserve everything. Okay, include the, the, the watch of your grandparents include the window. Um, for example, in, in Italy, there are a lot of buildings made under Mussolini, you know, the dictator. Mussolini, Okay, and he made a great building. It's fantastic. The quality is very, very high. Okay, and include the windows, include the furniture, the floors, uh, walls. The building was really made really very well. The architect was great and every mistake was punished. So the only the best architect at work. Um, so when I visit those buildings for me are fantastic and sometimes they even preserve the lighting system, the furniture, the window. So sometimes the modern generation throw away everything and rebuild the building its, its stand, 
but they throw away the windows or the lamp or the furniture. For me, it's a pain because they are valuable, they are beautiful, or at least they are sign of the time. Okay? So, philological preservation means you preserve everything, every single detail, simply because it's from the past. You are very respectful of the ancient things, and then you uh, uh, I mean, uh, don't throw away. Stupid example. The best keyboard ever done for computer was a keyboard for an IBM computer made in 1980. It's the best. Okay, so that one is one case of good stuff from the past. Um, another very critical point when you approach the ancient city and the ancient building is progressive abandoning, which it means ancient building, ancient villa, ancient town, ancient village. People leave, people are left because they move to the cities. The, in the city, the life is better, more comfortable, more easy. Uh, the apartments are um, better in many points of view. But then this is, a, this is an international trend. Eh? It's not only in China, but also in Italy we have exactly the same problem. There are many wonderful villages, like in China, which is abandoned. Only uh, old people and child live there. No economy, no job, no life, uh, nothing to do, okay? It's a big problem. Zero solution. There are no solutions. We try to do, we made the many workshops, but the solution is very critical. Point number three, complete destruction of the ancient building and district. This is very bad. For example, uh, in Beijing, something like 90 Five percent, ninety-three percent of ancient Be the old Beijing was uh, thrown down. It's a big problem. Okay, why? Because uh, the ancient architecture it is uh, the heritage of one culture. Okay, so it is uh, the Chinese heritage or the Italian ancient town. It is the Italian heritage. So it's something very because it is our own memory our own style of life. So, when the material part is missed, what you have is a critical problem. The number four, in my opinion, it is completely unacceptable. The copy. Hmm? You have an ancient building and you copy, generally speaking, in a worst way, what it was destroyed. I've seen some very beautiful, um, that case was, uh, maybe, maybe it was a Bui or something like this. It was in, in Guiyang, in, in one district, in one village of Guiyang. I think it's Bui, Bui minority. It is a bridge, very beautiful, made in Qin Dynasty. They throw down and rebuild in concrete. Okay, uh, almost a copy. That for me, I really can't understand the reason can't understand the reason. So, for me, if I ever to criticize, strongly criticize, I criticize the point number four, rebuilding the ancient heritage with modern logic. It is much better to preserve the ancient than classic opposition. Yes, but it costs a lot, right? It costs a lot, but at least you spend money for something valuable. A lot of money are simply throw away for Stupid stuff. Preserve the ancient building. It is something valuable for many cultures, simply because it's a relic of the past and it is the memory of your own culture. Uh, the point number five is in between. It is a very strong renovation of ancient uh, building. And uh, the part number six, it is very interesting. It is uh, tricky but very interesting, because the part number six, it means you have an ancient building or you have an ancient city that it doesn't work anymore. For example, the ancient Sehuyuar in Beijing, it doesn't work anymore today. I mean, you cannot live a comfortable life there, according with our standard, for example. 
There is a courtyard if you want to go to one pavilion to another pavilion, you must wear a jacket. If it is in winter, it's very cold. If it is in summer, it's very hot. It's not very comfortable. An apartment is better in terms of comfort of life. So the retrofit of the existing building simply means that you have an old building that it doesn't fit anymore your own life, but you can change to make it better according with your own demand. Example, there are a lot of buildings in Beijing which was transformed from Sohoyuar, villa uh, for families, into bar, into restaurant, or into museum. That is a typical case. Italy, for example, it is a fool of this kind of stuff. In the past, you know, uh, Italy has a lot of very important and very rich family. And after, they collapse. So they have a huge villa, huge house with hundreds of rooms. In the city center of Rome, for example, there are buildings which is bigger than this school. It's one, one private house, okay? And uh, what can you do? Which family today is so rich to buy and keep that kind of building? Impossible, I can't even think. So, what they did is transform into museum. Or, for example, it's very famous, one building made by Michelangelo, the famous uh, Renaissance architect, uh, become the French embassy. So, retrofit, it means the ancient function, it doesn't work anymore. We must put new function, kitchen, toilet, cinema, whenever, to adapt the ancient function to something new. So the people, we change a little bit of the logic of the building, but we still can use it. So it is a, it's, it produces value. Uh, here I already illustrate. Um, this picture, it's very interesting for me because it represents uh, my own work about the philological investigation of the ancient building. Okay? Uh, we have a method in my office which came from uh, the method that I learned in Italy and it concerns the way to investigate the ancient building, which is very different from China. My point of view is exactly because it is a philological investigation and I have no rights to give my own opinion about the building. I'm like a doctor, okay? Someone is sick, come to me and say, uh, I feel unwell. And the doctor cannot give their own opinion. Okay, you catch cold or you eat uh, some strange food. No, the doctor have no opinion. The doctor will say, okay, do blood exam, uh, x-ray, something, then the, the doctor look at the data, find in the numbers something strange, say, ah, you catch cold. Because you catch cold, the medicine is this. So it is a scientific approach. Doctor have no opinion, check your numbers, your data, and then give you the cure, right? It's exactly the same. I am a doctor. The building has some problems. Wall collapsing, mud, the plaster fall down, uh, uh, water filtration, vegetation on the roof, and so on. I'm not going to say I know the result. No. I must check the data, the numbers. So this system, it is based on several processes. First at all, we go on side and with the 3D scan, we generate the data here. Uh, I must use it. And we generate the 3D scan, right? 3D scan is something strange because it's not really very readable. Uh, it's something like an X-ray. It's a black and white picture or something like the picture 
uh, from the telescope of the star. When you look at this beautiful picture from the universe, that is a whole rendering made by, uh, by computer. The real picture it is black and white. So, this is the 3D scan. From the 3D scan, we overlap pictures. We will see later. Then we have a combination of 3D scan plus picture. And we generate this stuff. Then we have the third layer. And we redesign by AutoCAD the boundary of the 3D scan. Very, 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 very precise. Okay. Then finally, we add the problems. Hmm? Clear? When I was a student, many years ago, we take the picture of the building, made by the film camera, by the way, eh? very old. We print the picture into pieces, then we overlap the sketch paper, and by hand we redesign every detail, okay? Very, very thin. I remember the picture was so big, that big, even bigger than this, okay? So by pen, very precise, we must do every single detail. So now, we do exactly the same, but with a computer. But attention, on the contrary of the practice, most of the practice here in China, we are not going to design, to correct the mistake, okay? We are not, we are not doing more pretty what is broken. If it is broken, it's broken. If it is ugly, it's ugly. No mercy. Something like a painter in the past must paint your face. Any mistake of your face was correct because the painting must be ideal, must show how beautiful, how handsome you are. But a camera, a camera had no mercy. If you are handsome, if you are pretty, it shows you pretty. If you are ugly, you are ugly. That's it. No, uh, no compromise. What we did here is exactly exactly this. If there is something broken, or some mistake, or some differences in the roof, we must declare, okay, honestly. So 3D scan. The 3D scan. It is objective. It is the precise. Um, uh, explanation, precise record of the reality. There is a crack, there is no window, one wall collapse, that's it. But yes, but in theory should be without crack. In theory, the wall should be vertical. Okay? And, but, yes, but it's not vertical. So I have no one to correct the mistake. So one idea followed the typology. The ideal form. The wall must be perfect, the roof must be perfect, no crack, and so on. This is a type. In my case, it's a philological approach. I show what it is. Clear? It's a very important point. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, This is okay, we can go on, no problem. Point number four, I already discussed. Okay. This is a very interesting case. This is Venice. You know in Venice, there is the main square of Venice with the church and the tower, right? That the tower... There is the tower. The tower is new. It's not original. In 1970, one night, the tower collapsed. It doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Venice people wake up and find this. <laughs> so, it was a huge discussion in Italy. What can we do? Shall we keep... Or, it, it is lost forever. Gone. Done. It is the scene of the time. Or we should rebuild. So finally, after many years of discussion, they decided to rebuild, exactly as it was. Hmm? But no, no tourist knows. 
or at least only the tourists who are, are very curious. Um, but beside the single case, there is a one key problem. What can we do when a monument is missed? Hmm? You have an ancient building, ancient garden, something that doesn't exist anymore. What can we do? Build the copy? Uh, yes, but it's a copy. Personally, I am against of the copy. Second, shall we build something very modern? We call Frank Gehry, Zaha Hadid, the best architect in the world, and we rebuild the Tower of Venice. Uh, yes, that is a very interesting solution, but it is not like before, because that tower has a very special function in Venice, in terms of style, in terms of position, material, and so on. So, without that tower, the square of Venice is not the same. Hmm? Clear? Uh, this kind of case, it is an open question. I don't have, it doesn't take, not I don't have, it doesn't exist any solution. We don't know how to do. When a monument collapses, what can we do? After the earthquake, there are many earthquakes around the world who destroyed historical heritage, okay? What can we do when a building is destroyed? For example, in, in Sichuan, there are the earthquake in 2008 and some historical towers made by Chan Zhu, some collapse or some they are damaged. What can we do? Throw down? We can't because we cannot rebuild. Hmm? Open question. We already discussed this case. I, uh, I don't want to talk about this because we don't have so much time. A lot of picture. Eh? There are a lot of very interesting definitions from the Italian regulation. I quote the Italian regulation simply because in Italy it is quite uh, local people are very obsessed by by the restoration. So one idea is very powerful. It is those three. Uh, those uh, uh, three. Ordinary maintenance, special maintenance, and healing. I think that the three idea in the restoration field is very important. Ordinary maintenance is it means that you must repair day by you must keep day by day the functionality and the quality of a building. Okay, one glass is broken and you repair. Uh, one uh, you must repaint the wall. You must repaint the, 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 the walls, you must uh, clean the dust, and so on. This is ordinary maintenance. Special maintenance, it is something radical. Special maintenance is, for example, one main beam made by wood is broken, and you must change. That is a special maintenance. Special maintenance in Italy has a completely different regulation. You must ask permission by a special office because <laughs> these office have to agree that in your intervention it is suitable. Because, some, for example, if I have to rebuild one beam made by wood, it must be wood again. I cannot build by concrete. I remember very clear in 2003, many years ago, I came to China and I met a chief architect of one Beijing company who is doing intervention on uh, uh, Gugong, the Forbidden City. And so this lady was very proud. Said, look, look, this, this stuff. This is all my, my work. We rebuilt the roof of this pavilion in uh, Forbidden City. And they changed a wood beam, which was made in Ming Dynasty, with a concrete beam. And in my opinion, it was simply a madness because they get an original wood beam made by in Ming Dynasty, they throw away and they rebuild in concrete. And now, for sure, after 10 years or 20 years, it collapsed because the concrete is not so good, it's a bad material. So, special maintenance concerns some job which is a, bit, a little bit heavy. 
but it is a maintenance, it is not a rebuilding. Maintenance, it means you must keep as it was. Clear? So it is not completely new, it is not completely uh, original. Hmm? Restoration and conservative healing. Healing is exactly like your body. You feel sick, you get medicine and you heal. Sometimes the building are sick, exactly like a body. So you must preserve. I give you a very simple example. Imagine a wall. This wall is original, made in Qing Dynasty, Ming Dynasty, whenever. The foundation of the wall collapsed for several reasons. I don't care which one. So if the foundation collapsed, what happened? It cracked, right? So what can you do? One solution is throw away the wall and rebuild. Very bad, because we are doing philological investigation, philological restoration. So you must keep this wall original. So how to do? Generally talking, there are some technology that you dig a hole under the foundation and then you push up the foundation and then you reconnect with the steel bar and you make the organism one again um, uh, organic clear <laughs> there are thousands of possible uh, solutions do you know the uh, duomo di milano the of main course. church yeah. in milano right in the Inside the church, in the back, the in the um, how to say in English, in the back part of the church, there is a huge pillar. This pillar is uh, four times bigger than this room, so it's really huge. In Milan, there are some structural problems was going not to collapse, but there are some problems. So, the local engineer rebuilt that pillar from the bottom to the top. By concrete, no. They dig a hole. They dig a hole. They reach the bottom of the, of the pillar and they take off one bricks, repair, put back. Another bricks, repair and put back. One by one, from inside, they rebuild all the pillar. That's Here are a lot of theory. Okay. Uh, very quickly, because we have not so much time, uh, this is the case of Anhai. Anhai is this part, it's the original part of Anhai. Here, it's new. San So, one analysis that we have done is the analysis of the road and the pattern. Pattern, it means the texture. Hmm? So, we analyze the different pattern and we color the pattern that was similar. So, we understand that the city was composed by some air which is strange, like this, without any clear pattern. There are no rules. Other parts are more organic. Uh, another analysis that we have done, it is the analysis of one temple, or better, the human behavior inside one temple. In order to do this, we, uh, one of my brilliant students from Sri Lanka, we, uh, she used cellular automata and agent-based model to understand the behavior of the people inside the temple. Clear? Please. 
They use a, a Grasshopper and a Kilia, mm. three different software for analyzer. Why? If in the previous, if in the previous image here, this is the macro scale analysis. We can understand the logic of the different blocks. We also can find the age of construction, because in general, similar pattern belong to a similar age. We have the, we must understand, I like the doctor, again, once again, we must understand what is the problem of the body. At least we must understand the data, the numbers. This kind of pattern help us to understand what is the different age and what is the different parts. Hmm? In this case, we are in the analysis of the space, not only the logic and the form of the space, but something even more complex, the relationship in between form of the space and human behavior. Um, in this case, uh, maybe I will analyze later, I forgot. In this case, uh, we know that uh, the human being follow a very, uh, very simple pattern inside a space. In the temple, it's a little bit more complicated because it follows some wreath, it follows some uh, um, habit. So, my student did two, the analysis in two phases. Three phases, actually. The first one with the fly machine, the drone. And by pen, we follow the path of the human being. The second method is to use the GPS. But the GPS is not very accurate to check the um, track, to track the, the, the movement. Then we have the reality, how the people, the real people, use the space. Okay? But then we must have the simulation. The simulation with the cellular automata, it's a nightmare. Because every cellular automata, every cell, every single, uh, every agent, not cellular, every agent has at least a seven, we, we select seven parameters for every agent. And then you must set these parameters. Mm -hmm. And then you must understand how the, the, the agent work together. So it was really complicated, it's a bit technical, I don't want to go inside, but it needs a, a long description. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. This is the gene. This is another analysis that we have done. Uh, which concern three main area of the of the Anhai uh, Anhai town, the main road, one buffer zone between the ancient uh, bridge, uh, Anhai bridge, Anping bridge, and uh, the connection between Anping bridge with another town. These three points are the problems. So. This kind of analysis summarizes the problem that we find during our analysis. It is not our opinion, but it is how the things work. Another analysis, there is a young professor who is very good in this stuff, it is the analysis of the ancient settlement. And we find out that the ancient coast is different from the modern coast. And then we find that in this position before, it was the sea. There is a branch of a sea. Then we find out that the ancient city is directed, the main road of the ancient city, follow the line of the evacuation of the uh, water. So it was a 90 degree compared with the ancient coastline. So you see, the morphology of the coast, the form of the coast, <coughs> give us the answer why the city has this kind of orientation. Generally talking, the orientation of the city concerns the star. Hmm? There is one building here, which is exactly... Where is it? I think it's this one, this one here. You can see that this area has a different orientation. It's here, not here. 
because here there is one very important family and the founder of this house um, has a certain kind of birthday so the orientation of this house was in that direction but the rest of the city is direct 90 degree from the coastline which in the past was this clear so this is the morphological analysis of the city so the morphology give us the, the study of the form give us the answer about why this city has this specific form Okay, this is another analysis, analysis that we have done which concerns the typology, is what uh, Venice and Milan concern a lot. In between hundreds of buildings, hundreds of different cases, we find the four main typologies, which is this one. One, two, three, and four. Nothing more than this. There are changes, more or less tall, more or less wide, but that is the four types. So we categorize all the types of the building with subcategories, C, C1, C2, B, B1, B2, and so on, some examples, and also some material. We find out that there are only a limited number of materials. Mater those materials are very important if the local government wants even intervention. Now the situation is very bad, dirty, broken, blah blah blah, fine. So how can we do it? If the local government want repair, can they use titanium, glass, crazy material, gold? No, they can't, because it change too much about the nature of the place. So if you want to really respect the flavor of the city, then you are forced to use only that kind of color and that kind of material. Nothing more. Yes, but uh, gold is more pretty. Uh, yes, but it is not uh, in the heritage of the place. Uh, I'm, I'm going faster because uh, we speak a little too much. So I already mentioned to you the analysis of the um, of the tempo uh, using the agent based modeling I will describe this part for me is a very beautiful analysis but it is not mature enough in my opinion it is the uh, analysis of the pattern of the city we know that the city has his own pattern right could be very simple like this or very complicated like this one so we create a, uh, uh, how to say, an, uh, an area 400 for 400 meters wide. And we have several parameters, hmm? something like regularity, irregular, density, and so on. You see, different parts of the city have different kind of pattern a different kind of uh, regularity. In my opinion, this is a very interesting research. We already published, we won't go deep, but in my opinion, the direction is to create a sort of square code, a software, which can recognize, like the square code in your telephone, the regularity or chaotic pattern of the different area. Hmm? So it is clear, for example, that here there is a form of regularity. There is one road and a very precise pattern. This is even more clear. Here is a mess. There is no clear pattern. You can't recognize any rule. Here is better, much better. Okay? I think this is a very valuable analysis because it generates some data from the uh, existing city. Uh, this is, for example, very interesting because of those kind of analysis, the grid, the pattern, the regular, irregular, the, the cell, it is, uh, it generates data and those data, numbers, like the doctor, like the blood exam, 
generate numbers and this is very good for if you want to renew the old city for example you have to do a design of urban, urban planning or urban design what do you do you just cut a road with a knife you can but then you destroy the flavor of the ancient town so you must preserve the ancient nature of the of the city so if you have to renew the old block then you must understand you must know how the old block was made regularity for example or how much percent of regular pattern how what is the size of the ancient pa uh, parcel hmm? that method in my opinion is very powerful in terms of urban design Go on. Um, in this case, we did exactly the same analysis, but on a cell of 1,000 for 1,000 meters. And we find that there is only one element regular, which is the main road. It is John Chan Lu. And some regularity, which is missed just a few meters uh, after. Uh, this one, it is a very interesting picture, in my opinion, because it is the description of the different typology of a facade, only typology of the facade, along the road. So it's a sort of diagram of different facade and high along the road. But what it, is very, it was very clear is that there is the same parcel, 3.5 meters, 3.4, in each case, and then the high could variate, the material can change, but not so much. In fact, we find the A, B, C, D, four kind of typology. This is a 3D dimensional uh, elaboration. Um, this is the same analysis of the typology, but also considering the inner space. Hmm? Yes, because if we must renew, then you must respect the tradition. This is the different percentage in terms of uh, um, typology, in terms of high, and so on. This is the ratio in between the, uh, the uh, street size and height of the building and the street scale analysis. More open or more closed. Why this? Simply because in this case, if you have to do a project, a design of the street, you can't do what you want. If the leaders of the city say, yes, but here I want a huge supermarket. And then you say, yes, you can, but attention, because the responsibility is yours in the future, if the area, it is destroyed in his uh, uh, culture importance. By the way, the local leaders are really good, very nice. And themselves, because they're my friend, they say, we admit that in the past we made a mistake. Because in the past we throw down very large portion of the city, of the town, which was very valuable. And now we build some skyscraper which without any, any value. Hmm? So this kind of analysis show us with a quantitative uh, um, data the um, reason of the space. Okay? Uh, this this picture is uh, is more clear there. Here is better. This is a very complicated analysis, um, and it is based on different parameters, different parameters, and the connection with the different parameters. Yes, because every space has a certain kind of element. Okay, and then some of the elements are in touch. Some are not in touch, okay? So for this reason, the team create a lot of categories, many, 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 and then they connect each other in a complex system. Then they generate diagrams. I find these diagrams, I forget the name of these diagrams. This kind of diagram are very useful, especially for the comparative analysis. 
and they find relationship. Then very interesting things, this belongs to the intangible heritage, a very talented young director come in our workshop and she made a movie. The movie tells the story of the daily life of an old woman. So, when she, from when she wake up in the morning until night. And they follow the lady step by step all day. So, the reason is they want to find the use of the space of this person. And something that is very interesting because there are a sort of regular behavior, some changes day by day, uh, and uh, it belongs to a sort of objective investigation of the daily life. Because the director didn't say to the lady, ah, now you act happy, and after you must cry, and after you must jump. No, she had absolutely the normal life. In fact, sometimes she was a little bit scared because, you know, in the daily life of everyone, there is some part which is a little bit sensitive. And then she asked to don't mention her name hmm? because we can do the study, but have to be completely anonymous. Hmm? This belongs not to the tangible heritage, but on the intangible heritage. This is the movie, this is the diagram of the movie, where she lives, her apartment, and so on. Another very interesting research is about the indoor climate condition and how the people use the space. This diagram, it is a very, there is some description, it is the key point uh, uh, of this village on high and how uh, it, the space it is used by local people. Why I mention this uh, picture? Because every time you do an analysis on the back, it must have a structure. It must have a logic map. The logic map that we use in our office it is not uh, very. It's, it's very complicated. Uh, this one has a middle range complication. But you see. If you want to do an analysis of some places in a village, in a town, doesn't matter, on the back you must have a complex map because the reality is extremely complex. So you must generate a diagram which is able to explain the nature of the place. Clear? This is Longshan Temple. This is the behavior of the people inside the Longshan Temple, designed by drone, by the flying machine. This is all the diagrams. Red, it means a busy place, place where the people stand longer. Then section, how the people use this place in general. And in this part, it is the frequency, how many people use this part of the road, motorbike, bicycle, people, and car, in a unit of time. For every five minutes, we have those number of people, those percentage. This is the analysis of the Anpin Bridge, which is a probably will be listed in the UNESCO Her World Heritage because we also must find the problems in, the, in this bridge. There are problems in terms of usage of the space. And then we must analyze the reason of those problems. And this is the analysis. We find out that different categories of people Elder people, uh, child, middle-aged people, young people, they use the space in, with different dynamics. And then we have data and position, people distribution, you see, and people path. This is the analysis of the climate condition. This is what could be very interesting for you. 
analysis of the climate condition <clears throat> inside the ancient house of Fujian and try to understand the climate condition and the position of the people inside the space. This is the, uh, the map of one of the house. This is the main courtyard, main pavilion, and the gate. This is the measurement, the tools that we use for measurement, for uh, uh, temperature and wind and humid, humidity. Then the path of the people inside the house. And then they find correspondence in between climate condition and usage of the space. This is a, a one, the building that I analyzed personally. It is made by um, 99 pavilion. You see how huge is it? We only analyze this part because together it's impossible. It's too big. This is a very interesting picture in my point of view because it is the typical case of, uh, it is a technical stuff, in brief. This is made by 3D scan. This is made by high resolution camera. Now, don't look, don't, don't, look, don't check the quality of this picture itself because it is low resolution in the PPT but it is, it is made by a camera with a 40 megapixel, so it's very, very detailed. If you use the uh, 3D scan, the quality, the, the size is perfect, but the quality, the grain of the image is very poor. So the layer, so the, the, the final picture, it is made by different layer, 3D scan, high resolution camera, AutoCAD, and diagrams, four different layers. In this case, is the comparison in between the 3D scan quality and the quality of the high resolution camera. Unfortunately, this picture is not very clear, but in the real um, diagram, it's very, very evident. This is the result, 3D scan, very poor, overlap of the different pictures, uh, sorry, overlap of the high resolution camera and then redesign of AutoCAD and then diagrams. Those diagrams are very important because it concerns material and problem together. So, for example, the color around here, it shows the material pattern, bricks, stone, wood, concrete, and so on. S1, it means the material type. Uh, for example, uh, bricks number one, bricks number two. This stuff, it means the pathology. Pathology grade, but here it is, there is a mistake, sorry. Pathology category is B. Pathology grade is two. Uh, for example, bricks, uh, uh, humid bricks, grade of pathology number two. So you can understand exactly what is the state of the grade. Clear? We know from the pattern that it is uh, wood. Which kind of wood, which kind of problem, what is the, the, the grade of the problem? Clear? Then we did exactly the same, um, uh, the same diagram for every material and every uh, pathology of the building. It was a huge job. This is another problem that we find in the, um, in the Chinese architecture because for us it was very difficult to categorize every single wall because you know that uh, different portion of wall have a different problem. So our a diagram that I don't think I don't so I don't think I include in this presentation. But for example, maybe these three pillars have the same problem. 
So we must create a diagram where we say pillar one, two, and three pillar. What will say? One, two, and three pillars has this problem. So we must identify very precisely which pillar we are talking about. So in this case was the pillar number one, two, and three. We use a, a B, C, D, and numbers. So the pillar number H567. H567, they have a problem. Which problem and description? But it is also true that in China, this method is very good in Italy, but in China you have a two different kind, three different kind of structures. Walls, wood structures and roof. They don't follow the same grid. So we create a three different grid. This is for wood, wood structure. This is for wall structures. And I don't include it here, but there is also roof structures. So every single detail, it is very, very well defined. Then we analyze the, um, how to say, the, um, uh, quantity of the problem and this is the last picture one of the few pictures no the last maybe the last one yes uh religion and myth we are not going to discuss today about this topic because it's very big and uh, the analysis is try to understand how the people use the space but in the traditional way how the people believe what is the myth what is the religion what is the praying and so on not logic, it is not a quantitative analysis, but it is an analysis that it shows the humanity. Hmm? Why you like chocolates and you don't like noodles? There is no scientific, scientific reason. It seems simply because, simply because we are human. Okay? So sometimes the people use the space, not in a logical way, but simply because there are some, um, how to say, uh, tradition. So, to study the tradition, religion and myth are very important for the analysis of a city. This is our team. So, uh, this is just 30% of our team because we did uh, the three workshop, and this is our this is our teammate uh, Chen Yang. This me. This this guy is a wonderful, is a very high level person. Is Mr. Wu, uh, my PhD candidate? That's it. Okay. This is the book which in include all our study. The book is in English and Chinese, so you can easily read. I'm not very sure if you can find in the internet, but if you want, I have several copies. Unfortunately, not for free, but if you, it's not, I don't think it's very expensive. Eh. 160. I can give you a special price. Uh, if uh, I think it's a good book, not because I don't want to make money, but it's simply a good book for the analysis of the historical heritage. And um, this is uh, the square code of my course in internet. One is about artificial intelligence and architecture. Another one, it is a history of modern and contemporary architecture. This is the, simply the address you can uh, copy and uh, the web this is uh, my WeChat. Please, mercy, don't contact me altogether. I, I am very active in WeChat, but uh, I have my limit. And this is the our studio WeChat group. So if anyone needs some uh, advice, please contact me. But please be merciful, not altogether. And the other three we are called are uh, free. Thank you very much. That's it. If you have any questions. 有什么问题吗你问你们想读博想问他什么读博的要求啊什么的都可以啊就不一定是今天想做的内容什么任何的问题都会想可以比如说他是意大利在这里待了很多年啊然后你有什么什么疑惑你有什么好奇的都可以来
没有没有什么。那边翻译一下吗？然后把英文说吧。嗯，没有问题是吧？啊，你等一下，哎，你等我。OK OK。So anyone has question? Don't worry, take it easy. If, if, if you are if you are if you have a question, I'm happy. If you don't have a question, you make me sad. Put in this way. Don't be shy. And anyone want 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 comments? Question? Yes, please. As you first say, as you before said, that you say, uh, when you re, when you re, replicate, replicate, uh, ancient historic, ancient building or a uh, site, you say, you say we need to jump in the ancient, jump in the ancient society. So I want to ask, us, so how do you think how we? To jump in the Asian. You must study. You must no. First, you must. Uh, uh, I give an example. We have one professor in our university who can't speak English at all, but he even don't speak Chinese. He only speak ancient Chinese. Right. So when he write, he write classic Chinese, because his mind is completely inside the ancient world. He even can't understand the basic things of the modern stuff. Okay. So I have another friend who is a very famous photographer in China, top photographer in China, and uh, in the past when he sent a message in Wei Xin, hmm, he first used the uh, Mao Bi. He write on paper, take a picture and send. Okay, so that is the example of uh, people who think in the ancient, uh, according to the ancient history. I don't think, uh, or at least, it's very difficult to switch between the modern mind and the ancient mind. Even for me, sometimes it's very hard um, because they are opposite. They are simply upside down. So people who, generally speaking, uh, are in the area of historical heritage, ancient, they are. They have a special mind. Okay, maybe they hate the modern time. I have a friend in New York, for example. Unfortunately, he's passed away. He has no mobile phone, no smartphone, zero at all, and his life is very normal. He go to he's top end architect, very high, maybe top 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 ten in the US, very famous, Michael Sorkin. He have no, he have a computer. I'm not sure. Yes, he has a computer because sometimes he's an email. He has a computer, but he has no smartphone. Right. And um, so, if you want jump inside the ancient world, then you must read the classic Chinese. You must study the ancient philosophy. You must study the ancient book, and you must understand the ancient process of life. So you must uh, interview the old people, and uh, it is a special process of understanding. Okay, which it doesn't mean that you must hate the new technology. The new technology are just a toy to understand the ancient, the ancient world. Okay, this is my opinion. So deep investigation, deep analysis of the ancient world. So no need to take care about. Uh, uh, the, the the last uh, the last uh, material the last uh, computer that is for the new stuff the ancient stuff is definitely completely different. I give you a, a, an example: quantitative and qualitative analysis. Right? You are familiar with the, the difference, right? Quantitative uh, analysis is numbers: five, ten, twenty-four. Quantity numbers. The reality can change into numbers. But the ancient world, it doesn't, have, doesn't exist the quantitative analysis. Right. So all this stuff, for example, all this stuff, this one, is bullshit. Zero. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense for the ancient world. For him, is, is, the, is the key, key point. Without this, that is that is the, the reality. The ancient people simply can't understand these kind of things. 
I give an example because the, this is a temperature, it doesn't matter. But if you study the ventilation, in, in the case of the modern guy, the young guy, ventilation are numbers. Okay? In the ancient time, ventilation are gods. God. It's very different. Quantitative analysis is very objective. The wind is 20 km per hour from this direction, this high, and that is the turbulence. Numbers, clear, objective. In the other, on the other hand, the ancients know nothing about this stuff, because it doesn't exist, but they know gods. Feng Shui. That's it, okay? So, if you want to investigate the past, definitely, in my opinion, the best of the best is joined together ancient and modern. So data are very important, but you also you should remember that data is not everything. It's just what, maybe half, 50%. And especially the ancient people don't think in this way. So when they create architecture, for example, or material, they think in a completely different way. Okay? So jump into the past. Thank you. Thank you. Other question? Okay. Thank you.